Now let's see where we're at in our deployment requirements. We've created our local repo, we created our initial commit, we created our remote repo on GitHub, and we pushed everything up there. So this is where we're at right now. Uh, next steps are sign up for a Heroku account. If you have not already done that, please go do it. It's free and very easy to use. Then install the Heroku CLI command line toolbelt at toolbelt.heroku.com. Then from there, now we want to create the application on Heroku. So if you've already done those first two steps, go back to the command line. And I'm back on Tasky because uh, I've not pushed this up to Heroku. So I have been saving this part for uh, doing it live. So to create this application, type in Heroku create and then you could just leave it like this and Heroku will create a name for you or you could do it yourself so I'm going to say edutectional dash tasky and now it's going to go through the process of going and creating a new application instance on Heroku for you and it looks like that all got added and you can also see some details if you type in git remote dash v and you can see that now we have a new remote right here and the remote is located at git.heroku.com slash edutectional dash tasky so all of this is working perfectly so now is the moment of truth i'm going to type in git push heroku master so this is going to take a while uh, and I can walk through exactly what's going on here. It's t looking at GitHub first and it's saying, OK, what is all the code that's located on GitHub and in the master branch? And let's push that code to our Heroku application instance. So Git push is sending everything to Git. Heroku is the option, so it knows, OK, let's point this at Heroku. And master is the branch. You only have to type in master this first time, and then it knows from then on what you're doing. And you can even watch this as it's happening. You can see that it's detected a Ruby app, it's picked out a version for Ruby, and right now it's installing all of the different gems that we have in our application. Everything from Rake, Minitest, uh, everything like that. Device will be installed, Carrier Wave, all of those different things will all be integrated. So this is going to run through, and depending on your connection speed, uh, this can take anywhere from a couple minutes to even longer than that. So uh, let's just let it keep working. You can see right here all the different fog options that are being installed. Remember, fog is our connection between our application and AWS. And here we go, we actually got an error, which is totally fine and it's good because this is something, uh, this was a mistake of mine, uh, this needs to be fixed. Okay, so it says push rejected, failed to compile the Ruby app. Now, I know what went wrong here, but let's look to see what the problem was. And it says make sure that gem install SQL Lite succeeds before bundling. And what the problem here is Heroku does not use SQL Lite as a database it uses Postgres so we need to fix this so come into the code and I'm actually going to come here and add a new uh, a new set of instructions for our readme file integrate uh, Postgres for are for the production database okay and you may wonder how to do that it's actually not that difficult uh, just switch to the gem file and you can see right here we have SQLite light as the uh, as the database I'm gonna get rid of this comment and here just type in PG come back type in bundle install let it install that that looks like it worked check get status you can see that it's updated the readme and it's also updated the gem file and just say switched 
database to Postgres. And then type in git push. It'll probably ask for your login credentials. Uh, it may or may not. I have some applications it requires it, others that it doesn't, and that's through GitHub for their authentication. And after we've pushed, then we can re-push to Heroku and see if that fixes it. So this is all pushing right now to GitHub only. We're still going to have to push back to Heroku again. Okay, so that looks like it all worked. Now I can just do git push Heroku master again and let it go through all those steps. And the amount it takes to deploy, it really ranges. It, t it definitely depends a little bit on your uh, connection speed, but it also has a lot to do with the size of the app. This application is pretty small, so it's not going to take that long. I've had uh, applications that got so big that it was impossible to even use Heroku anymore because it kept timing out because it was taking over 15 minutes to deploy. And I have some applications that don't use Heroku, uh, some legacy applications I've taken over where it takes a full hour to deploy it to the web because the application was just so big. So if it takes a little while, don't worry. That uh, has a few different factors. But so far it looks like this is all working. It's, I believe it's about at the spot where it failed last time. So let's make sure that it gets past this stage and we should be good to go. Some other things that can kill a deployment. We saw one of them was the database. Another one would be if you have bad, uh, if you have a bad uh, CSS file. And we can see this actually failed again. We'll figure out what the problem is. Uh, if you have a bad CSS file, it will break as well. And that may or may not be the issue here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is this one's totally fine and I have some more instructions for us. Uh, let's see, let me add in um, our readme file. So integrate Postgres. Okay, also integrate config variables on Heroku. Okay, and on this one, I am going to actually pause the video and come back because I'm well let me show you really quick how to do it but I'm not actually going to type them in uh, where you can see it because you should never let anybody see what your config variables are uh, but if you come over to the command line and come over here the way that you test this out or the way you type these in is you type in Heroku config and then set and then for this case, uh, just so they're matching, I would copy and paste this. Go into your application YAML file inside of your initializer. So if you go to um, config, initializers, or I'm sorry, just config, uh, your application YAML file, copy and paste your AWS access key and all of that and just paste it right in there and you can set them that way. I'm going to pause the video, do that, come back and then we'll deploy. And we're back. Now before we even get into pushing, uh, I'm assuming you've put in your AWS access key, your secret access key, and then also your production AWS bucket. Uh, that's uh, all, all of that should look something like this I'll just show you so this should be the format uh, for each one of these and uh, so assuming that all went properly uh, you should be able to just do Heroku config and you'll print out all of your uh, config variables for you right there so uh, one note I wanted to make was to say 
I leave the mistakes in and those kind of things because as a developer, I spend, well, as a person, I spend probably 90% of my time developing and the other 10% would be on the tutorial side. So the majority of my time is spent in doing real life development and in real life development, no longer, no matter how long you've been doing it, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to forget to do things that happens on a day in and day out basis. The longer you do it, the mistakes may be different, but they're still going to be there. Uh, even some of the best developers that I know in the world uh, still make mistakes on a re relative basis. So I didn't want it would be very easy for me to just when a mistake gets made, just redo the video or, you know, cut it or do something like that. I leave them in there because these are the same type of mistakes that you may or may not be making when you're doing it and I'd rather you see how to fix them. So that's why I'll leave those in there. So I'm going to do a quick get status and uh, we did update our readme so I don't like pushing anything uh, to Heroku uh, if I have things that are ready to go that are pending uh, locally. So I'm just going to say updated readme with instructions and get push and it's going to ask me for my username and password again and then uh, and then it's going to push it to github after we do all that then it's going to be should be good to go with pushing to Heroku. So this is all being pushed up to GitHub right now, and hopefully we'll be able to finally get this live on the web. I know this is one of the longer videos in the whole series, so uh, I apologize for that. I usually like to keep them under 10 minutes, but this is a hard one to break up. So git push Heroku master. Now it's going to go through all the same steps that we've seen and uh, it's going uh, some of the other processes in addition to installing the application on the system there's a lot more that goes into it it also pre-compiles all of our assets so it takes all of our JavaScript and our CSS files and it puts them and combines them all into one file to help the site load faster so there's a lot of different things happening behind the scenes that uh, you may not even think of when it comes to getting a site up especially if you came from a world of from like PHP or something like that where you could just toss all your files up onto a server via FTP and it would start working this is a, a lot different but it's a lot different for some very specific reasons there's some magic kind of going on behind the scenes that is uh, uh, that's pretty cool and it also sometimes can lead to having to do some more work but I think you'll appreciate it in the long run so this is looks like it's all working nicely right now we're at the stage where it's uploading all the gems and running running bundle install and if you notice from our last failed attempt it also looks to make sure that any of the instance variables or config variables that we used like our AWS ones it makes sure that those all work as well okay this looks like it is working there you go it worked and it even says that it put it right here for us now if we try to go to the site right now it will fail because if you remember we still have one last thing to do we have to run Heroku run rake DB migrate so run this and what this is going to do is it's going to look at the database uh, schema file and it's going to go and uh, create the database and create all of our migrations for us so it's going to load that up and that is required 90% of the time that developers come up to me and say oh I push Heroku but it's not working it seems like this always seems to be the thing they forget so make sure that you run this you can see it created all the tables each one of these is one of our it matches up with one of our uh, migration files so we should be good to go now so let me go to edutectional dash tasky dot heroku app dot com in the browser 
Now, one thing to know about Heroku is Heroku is very, very concerned about their performance. So what it will do to your application, if it's not used on, I forget if it's an hourly basis or a daily basis, it will actually shut the application down and the next person that goes at URL, it'll take about 30 seconds for it to load up. So just if you have some really slow load times, if you install it and then you come back a day later and it's really slow. Uh, that's the uh, that's a reason for it. There are some ways around it. Uh, one is having a paid account. The other is installing services like New Relic and then uh, telling New Relic to ping the, your URL about once an hour or so, and that will also fix it. So this looks like it's all working. So I'm gonna click register and make sure that all of this is working. So that's going to create a record in the database. And let's make sure that all of that is working like it should. Part of the reason it's going slow is just because I'm on a really slow internet connection. Uh, I'm just wanting to make sure it doesn't have any errors or anything like that. Okay, that worked. Thank you for signing in for an account. And we see that we have sign, sign out. We have edit account. We also have our projects right here. I'm going to create a project for us just to make sure that everything is working. So test project and my description. Create project and all of that is, uh, my, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. So this looks like perfect. It's all working. It takes us to here. You also can see how this gave us a duplicate message, which is fine. Uh, this can be updated in the views. Remember how we put our alerts, uh, our alert partial there? Well, each one of these pages from the scaffold already had this built into it. So just go to that view page and remove it, and that's how you'll get rid of that. So all of this is working absolutely perfectly. So if you went through all this, great job. You now have an application on Heroku, and you have the ability to deploy any type of Rails application. That's uh, that's really the, uh, the basic things that you need to know. So uh, great job. In the next video, we're going to get into how to access your data using the command line with Roku.